Paul McLean's fictional portrait of Jill Horn, Hemingway marriage equals love and ruin. Paul McLean can't let Papa Hemingway go. The towering ego and allure of the great American writer is once again on chest-puffing display in McLean's latest novel, Love and Ruin, Ballantine, 376 pp, out of four, in which Ernest Hemingway third wife, war correspondent and author Martha Gellhorn, shares center stage. Gellhorn narrates this historical novel, as Hemingway wife number one, the neglected Hadley Richardson, did in McLean's 2011 best-selling book club fave, The Paris Wife. Love and Ruin is a lovely, lyrical departure of a title. The war correspondent wife doesn't exactly sing, and anyone familiar with Hemingway's biography knows that ruin is in store for this marriage as well, for there was one last wife to come, Mary Welsh, also a war correspondent. If love and war are two of the greatest themes in literature, they're both here as McLean fashions her portrait of Marty Jellhorn. She's a maverick, a young woman not afraid to break the rules, for example, sleep with married men, and break away from women's pages fluff as a journalist. She led an incredible, bravery-filled life, 1908-1998, and one of the most compelling scenes comes late in the novel when Jellhorn, kept from the front lines as a female journalist, smuggles herself aboard a hospital ship so she can land at Normandy to cover D-Day. This really happened. I wish there were more you are there, frontline moments with Jellhorn in Love and Ruin. She rang the alarm bell early on Hitler and was committed to describing the personal stories of those caught up in conflict. But domestic drama holds more appeal for McLean, and the real battleground in Love and Ruin is the home front. There's much dithering as Jellhorn suffers insecurity about the novel she's trying to write. Who wouldn't be worried about being subsumed by Hemingway's imposing shadow, but this hand-wringing becomes annoying. As encircling the sun. Her historical novel about early aviatrix Beryl Markham, McLean delineates the challenges of trying to be a modern woman in a distinctly man's world. Book club chatter fodder, indeed. It can be weird, if titillating, to eavesdrop on imagined, intimate conversations between famous people, but McLean's dialogue, is, as Hem might say, good and true. She captures the passion Jellhorn and Hemingway feel for each other and the slow erosion of trust on both sides. Jellhorn seems to suffer little guilt about breaking up Hemingway's second marriage to Pauline Pfeiffer. She meets the famed author of The Sun Also Rises in Key West by chance while on vacation with her mother in 1936, and soon she and an intrigued Hemingway are making plans to travel to cover the Spanish Civil War, which will inspire his classic For Whom the Bell Tolls, which he dedicated to Jellhorn. McLean captures the alternate joy and angst both writers experience as they wrestle with their work and with their competing agendas. Ultimately Papa, who is now drinking heavily and fighting bouts of depression, is not happy that wife number three keeps running off to war zones. The Martha Gellhorn of love and ruin is an ambivalent figure, heroic in public and often tentative at home. I'm not sure I buy it, but like McLean, I can't get enough of the complicated, flawed fascinating man and literary giant who, for a time, captured and dominated Jellhorn's heart and soul. That's the strange paradox of women's historical fiction.